So we'll go through the installation steps of RD the RDFA IO Semantic Media Wiki extension uh, on a fresh Xubuntu 14.04 uh, machine. Uh, so I have prepared a little bit already. Uh, we can. I have the, the all the inst uh, installation instruction steps in a gist on my gist page somewhere. Samuel. So let's open that and we'll open a terminal here to the right. So the first thing is we'll install a few uh, a few packages which might be nice. So GNOME terminal actually I have it installed already. But that's about it. sudo apt get install pseudo password let it install git is, is of course the version control system vim is text editor and c url is used for sometimes for downloading stuff subversion is another version control system uh, so the next step will be installing the, uh, the main components of a lamp server which is the apache web server mysql database and php for executing the code so let's not wait anymore, but just execute that. And then the next step will be installing kind of the connections between Apache and MySQL, PHP and, uh, sorry, Apache and PHP, PHP and MySQL and so on. Uh, still here okay for for my scale we need to set the root password so we'll use something I put change this change this for now so I'll try to spend a second to show how you can find the names of these packages yourself if you know what you want to install but don't remember the exact name of this packages Apache restarted we're coming to the end here I think right so control L to clear this terminal uh, okay so in order to find packages, if we know parts of the package name, we can you do we can use the aptitude cache, apt cache, and search. And then we use Apache and PHP. Now I will pipe it to the less uh, reader and use the big dash s in order to not wrap the lines. So, okay. Now I in inside less I can use the slash key to search so I can write Apache here Apache I get them highlighted and then I see that this one seems to be be the one the be the one from the description here so I type Q to exit less so that's how to find it out yourself so now let's just execute this command And we're done. Now there's just a few more PHP packages that need to be installing, such as CLI uh, in order to be able to execute PHP scripts in the command line, GD for image manipulation, Xdebug for being able to connect a debugger to, to the PHP process. And if you want to parse JSON and XML documents, these last ones are good as well. So let's take them. There we go. Now, even though Apache was restarted just a moment ago, it might be good to restart it again right after we are done with the extra PHP installations. And actually, we can restart MySQL as well. So it's sudo service, the service name, and restart. Right. So now, in order to test that Apache works or the web server, 
will open the Firefox and go to the local host address and it works yes so what we'll do now we'll try to make sure that PHP works as well so we go to the folder where the files are located in Apache by default var slash var www inside here we have an HTML folder where where all the files are located which which uh, are located after localhost so we can actually look into it cd html we have the index file here which is just this file that is shown here but we have a problem here that this html folder is owned by root and the group is set to root as well so if we want to change something we see that the write the write permission here is only set for for the user which is root the first three letters here are the user the next three are, uh, sorry the next three are the group and the rest is others so in order to be able to change files inside here without using the sudo commands all the time we want to sudo change owner do it recursively to the user which we are currently exubuntu and the group can be the web server's uh, username and group which is www data and then we tell that we want to do this for this folder so now it's owned by exubuntu and the group is is this this one so now we can go into html let's see here and now we let's see where we are we have passed this step and now in order to check that php works we want to put this little snippet into a php file named yeah it can be named anything but let's use php info.php nano is a simple text editor so we paste the snippet and then to save and exit we have actually a reference down here this signed character there means control on a pc or command on a mac so control o to save and press enter to confirm control control x to exit yes okay and now of course this file is accessible from localhost slash php info we see it here php info.php and yes it works we see a lot of uh, system information about the php installation so i think we're ready to start installing media wiki now so let's open the media wiki web page the commands there are just for doing it in, in the command line but we can do it manually of course we go to download oh, let's do this one a little bit bigger and we use the link here we right click and copy link location because i want to download it from the command line i find it's easier I use wget which is a tool for downloading stuff on the command line paste the link right click then paste the link the window again and let's go back to see we are on this step and the next step will be extracting this archive using the tar command which is our the archive manager in Linux we will use the set command because it's zipped X means extract V will be a bit make it the output a bit more verbose and the F tells that the next uh, thing we type is the file here so tar zxvf and the file i use i just type the m m and tab here so it's auto completing now it's uh, unpacking this this file into this folder so i think we can delete this file and can change the name of this folder to something easier mw123 which 
be easy enough. Like that. Okay. So now if we wanted, we could just go into that folder, which is now the MediaVic installation, and start setting up things. But but it might be better to create create the database and so on first instead. So to do that, we log into MySQL with user root and tell tell it that we want to type a password using the dash p. Change this. Okay. So let's see what databases we have here. Show databases. Okay, not so much. So use create database. You don't have to use capitals, but it makes it a bit easier to see which are the actual MySQL commands. Okay, created the database, and we want, need a user. Create user mw123 at localhost and give it a password e identified by change this. Okay, and now we need to give access to the database to this user. So grant all privileges. We don't need to say on database one mw123 dot all tables to mw123 at localhost. Okay, and now we're done, so we can quit. Oh, sorry, quit. Yeah, right. So now we can go. This one go again to localhost mw123 and start setting up the wiki. And our resizes cannot, English is fine. We're fine with the settings. Okay, now we have MySQL settings. So the database host is localhost. The database name, if you remember, it's mw123. We don't have any table prefix. The username is mw123. Database password, change this, I guess we used. There we go. Let's see, database account for web access. Yes, use the same. These settings are fine. Okay, name of the wiki. Use something like this. Username, I you know, like for logging into the wiki, I, I used to use admin and change this, change this. We don't need any email address. I don't want to tell any more information. Let's continue. Okay. Congratulations. And now, uh, now we're offered to save a local settings file. And actually, normally, let's see, okay, yeah, it's saving it to some locations that we don't know, but if we right click and open containing folder, we can see where it is. And it is in, in our home folder slash downloads. There it is, okay. So then we come to this step that we copy, copy the file. So we copy from a tilde, which is a shortcut for our home folder, downloads, I use tab to complete, local settings was the only file, and then dot in order to copy it to where we're standing right now. Oh, okay, I should actually put it inside the MediaWiki folder, right, like that, okay. We were supposed to stand there. So let's see that we have the ls ltr in order to see the la latest files in the bottom local settings is there right so then we're fine to go then we can use this link to enter our wiki so the wiki is there okay so then let's continue with semantic media wiki so typically we would go to semanticmediawiki.org and we click on the latest version here. Here we cannot copy any download URL. Instead, 
uh, we go to the installing page, the installing semantic media wiki here. Try to look for the installing link here. And then requirements, we hope we have all this stuff. Installation, okay, we have media wiki 1.23, so uh, we need to use the composer. There, there's a tool called composer for then we can just run this command composer command to install stuff here so we open the installing composer link in a new tab and here is a very easy way to install to get composer it's using the CURL tool which we installed before so let's just paste this command here Let me actually make our this uh, line that is shown here already always uh, make it a little bit easier. It's an environment wa variable called PS1. Okay, that's uh, better. Or weak. yeah, that's better. That's good enough, I think. Okay, so let's look at the latest files we have. Okay, we have composer.phr here. That's the only thing this command does. It, it checks some things and downloads this com composer.phr. So now we can, since we have also the PHP com uh, command available, we can, we can run php composer.phar and this part here. I use PHP and this composer. As you see, it autocompletes because we have this file, and then I paste. Oh, sorry, paste this last bit here in order to install Semantic Media Wiki Install all the dependencies for Semantic Media Wiki automatically. Okay. So, I think now if we look in extensions, in the extensions folder here, we see we have Semantic Media Wiki and a lot of other extensions. So let's go out again. Now we're, we're in the Wiki folder here. PWD, uh, PWD stands for Print Working Directory. Uh, okay, so we should also run the script update.php located in the main tenants folder. Main press tab key, update press tab key.php. Okay, it's okay. Seems to be doing stuff. We're done. Okay, so the last step will be to put this uh, enable semantics function call inside uh, inside our local settings file, and uh, we put the host name here, and it will be localhost for us. But we copy this one. Okay, nano. Welcome. Use tab key. Use page down to go to the bottom. Paste this on here local host use we can use exit directly here actually and pre and answer a y here to to confirm that we want to save before we exit okay let's uh, we can go back to our instructions here so we have actually actually done some of these steps already by by following the the instructions on semanticmediawiki.org. So I think now we can check that we have Semantic Media Wiki installed. We can do that by, for example, we can go to the special special pages page. 
and search on the page here, control F, semantic, and we could see some semantic, semantic media wiki page, special pages here, like browse wiki and so on. So it seems to be working. Anyway, then it's time for installing uh, the RDFIO extension. So we want to open it. Let's close these tabs. This one. Paste. MediaWiki.org wiki extension RDFIO to find the installation instructions. So we see, for example, that uh, in order to download Sorry, we have to use git repository URL. Okay, I think we can actually download a snapshot. Yes, okay, no uploads there, so we'll use the git repository, git repository URL. Or we can follow the instructions here, of course. That's better. Let's see. Okay, yeah, there are some things we might, some settings we want to add to Semantic Media Wiki. Uh, and all these settings we do in local settings.php. Go to the bottom, paste it like that. Now we want to install the Wiki Object Model extension. So we go to, uh, we, we're already in the wiki folder here. So we go into the extensions folder. And then we, there's a link here for checking it out from subversion already. SVN is the command for subversion and checkout. Okay. We stand in extensions and these are the folders and we have a wiki object model here. Okay, we need to add an include statement to local settings. Oh, sorry. We need to go back up to the main wiki folder. Okay. Oops wasn't that visible actually. Okay. Now we're ready to we just make sure that the wiki action has not crashed or anything. Then it's time to install RDFIO. Let's go back to the extensions folder. And uh, here we have the the command already for cloning RDFIO from git. So now we have uh, RDFIO here as well. And here as well, we need to put an include statement in the local settings. Now I'll use Vim because I think it has a bit better syntax highlighting for, for PHP. Oh, sorry. Okay. There was another setting that is good to have, so we use that one as well. Okay. So let's see here. Yeah, we need to download the ARC extension as well. So we go into extensions, semantic media wiki, check what we here have here. We don't have any libs folder, so we need to create it. Make their libs. Okay, libs. Now we have it there. Go into libs. Nothing here. And then we clone. Clone the arc to git repository and and but we name it to arc without the two here, because that was I think the convention for semantic media wiki at least before so now we have the arc folder here as well 
So as it tells here, RDFIO adds include lines for that already. So I think that's basically it. This is something that we will put into the media wiki sidebar uh, article. Let's refresh. So we, we go to the media wiki sidebar article which which uh, edits this uh, sidebar bar here to the left. We need to log in, add admin, change this, edit. I used to put this one below, below search, search box here. The search box actually is output to another, another place anyway. Uh, okay, aha. See, we, we, there was a step we need to do before. There was this arc to special arc to admin. So we try that first. Set up the store. Okay. Now it works better. see it yet. Maybe we should try action link on a purge. Let's see. Tools. Okay, semantic tools. We have it here, right? Arc to admin. Store is already set up. Okay, so we have actually gone through a lot of these steps here. Right, we have added this as well. We have added the stuff to the mini wiki sidebar. Okay, so we should actually be done now. Now we can go to RDF import and try it out. We use the paste RDF uh, tool instead. We use turtle, paste the turtle example and submit. Okay, try to import the data. We we'll look in recent changes if something has happened. And yes, we have we have some stuff here. The fact box here, which we have added, puts all this stuff. So it seems to work. We see here that semantic facts are added based on the turtle example. So that's it. Thanks for watching.